Hey there, you Daniacs. We're back from GreatDanCare.com. Today, Gus and I have something special for you. Uh, a couple videos back, we took a poll of all the Great Dane owners, the thousands of which are following this channel, and we asked everybody, what is the number one thing that if you could go back in time and kind of change or choose to do differently with your Great Dane, what would that be? Uh, so today's video, we'll be kind of walking through the most common themes and things that really came up from that and dive right in. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, my name is Zach and this is Gus and we're from Great Dane Care. And it's our mission to help Great Dane owners around the world with all the uh, things that come up and helping you solve the most common problems. Uh, so this is something that resonates with you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel down below and ring that notification bell. So that way you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Now, the first story that I'll share that we heard from a Great Dane owner, much like yourself, is that when they got their dog, or I should say in this case, dogs, that they really wish they had not gotten two Great Danes from the same litter. Now, we already know that Great Danes are very large dogs. They're very strong. They do require a lot of kind of work on your part to kind of take care of them. And of course, having two of these Great Dane puppies running around is certainly much more work than having one. Uh, but in her particular experience, she shared that she felt that because these dogs both came from the exact same litter, they'd obviously been with each other since birth and had a very close bond, that when they did come to her house, that they were very much so prone to kind of getting in trouble and being rambunctious and just kind of rallying each other up and not always listening to her. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Yeah, so she said that while, uh, you know, obviously any dog is plenty of work, that she would probably never again want to get two dogs from the exact same litter just to kind of save herself from that frustration of uh, being ganged up on by these two Great Dane puppies. Now the second piece of feedback that we heard from Great Dane owners was that they really wish that they'd spent more time kind of investigating or kind of researching the particular breeder that they were getting their dog from. Now we all know that while you can certainly get fantastic Great Danes uh, through adoption or going to the shelter, many owners do choose to go through a breeder just as a way to help circumvent potential health issues or get a particular color or temperament. Um, and knowing that as a result of these, it does of course uh, lead to a higher cost um, for working with the breeders, it is very fair that you as the, you know, the purchaser and the person who's going to be bringing home your lovely Great Dane, that it's completely fair for you to ask questions. So things like asking for photos and pedigrees for the parents. Um, in this particular case, the person shared that when they actually picked up their puppy, they weren't actually given even a formal uh, printout from the veterinarian with all the vaccinations that they had received. Um, it was just simply a handwritten list that seemed very informal and they really felt like there was uh, not the best things going on there. So this isn't to say that in this particular case that the breeder did anything particularly wrong. Perhaps the dog quite literally ate the piece of paper and just messed it up so they just manually transcribed it by hand. Uh, but I would just say caution yourself, you know, when you are researching your breeder and working with them, um, if you kind of feel uneasy or if you feel like you're not getting the answers to your questions, then maybe there is something going wrong. Um, you have every right to kind of ask these questions and investigate them much like a good breeder will be investigating you as well to make sure that you are in return also a, a qualified owner. Now moving on to number three, we'll jump into the hotly debated world of food for our Great Danes. Um, one owner shared a story um, that is unfortunately a little bit of a case of misinformation just through different details kind of being popularized over the years. But um, what they shared in their use case was that from the time that their Great Dane was a puppy that they fed them a grain-free diet and unfortunately, this led to the dog developing DCM by the age of two. Um, obviously, these types of heart problems are very serious. And while there is uh, no guarantee that you know just feeding a grain free diet will give your dog DCM, there have been more recent studies indicating that it's really leading to a higher rate of occurrence. Um, so based on the current information, you know, I would always say speak with your veterinarian to get their exact recommendation. But it sounds like a grain free diet is probably not the best approach unless you're addressing some very specific dietary consideration or need that's come up. So for number four on the list, I can guarantee you that if you check a Facebook post or a forum that you'll see tons of stories about Great Dane owners who have a terrible time trying to cut their Great Dane's nails. Now, the main reason that this happens is that the owner just simply didn't start practicing or going through the practice of cutting their dog's nails from an early age. So the best thing that you can do is don't put it off till later. It's only gonna make it worse. Just make sure that you get your dog comfortable with the process. And kind of similar as I alluded to in the bath video a couple back, you don't even have to start with the process of nail trimming. Just get your dog used to kind of handling their feet and their paws 
before you even get into clipping. So from a very young age, you know, see if your Great Dane will let you kind of hold their paw, kind of manipulate their pads, move their toes around. As you can see, uh, Gus is very relaxed and doesn't care at all about what's going on here. And she's actually a really good sport when it comes to getting her nails trimmed as well, because she knows that it always leads to treats. Um, so that's something that you should also make sure you work into this process is not just getting them comfortable with it, but making sure there's always a positive outcome. So are you giving them treats? Are you giving them affection? Are we having a fun trip to the park afterwards? Create that type of positive reinforcement and practice this on a very consistent basis. Now, on that note, by consistent basis, I don't mean cutting their nails once a month. If we look at that over the course of a year, that's only 12 times you've cut their nails. Better yet would be to approach it by doing it on a weekly basis. So maybe every single week, just trim the tiniest little bit of off their nails. So that way, instead of 12 times a year, you're looking at 48 times a year that your dog has gotten used to the process of just having their nails trimmed. Now, obviously at that you know, high of a frequency, you're not cutting a ton off their nails. It's just the tiniest, a uh, little bit and the quickest timing. Uh, but this gives you a chance once they get it, to get practice and let them get comfortable with the process as well. Now for number five, also similar to the process of Great Danes not always being comfortable having their nails trimmed. I also hear a lot of stories about Great Danes being really poorly behaved on a leash. Now this is a little bit frightening when you consider that as a, an adult, you know, our females probably range from 110 to 140 pounds. The male is 140 to 170 on average, some being over 200 even. That is a really big, really strong animal. And if they don't know how to act properly and behave in a reasonable manner on a leash, that's a situation that can not only hurt them, but could also hurt yourself and others around you. Um, so I would say that it's really important to make a practice of from the earliest possible age, practice leash training. You know, take them on lots of walks, teach them to not pull on the leash, and these issues as they grow, you know, they may only start out as a 20 pound puppy, but before you know it, you're gonna have a dog that's over 100 pounds and you know, if they wanted to, they could be literally dragging you down the street. Um, so it's really important that you put the time of the practice in, much like with the nail trimming, to on a daily basis, go on walks and get them very used to and good at walking on the leash. Now for number six, this is something that, uh, funny enough, is very consistent with some things that we've already talked about, and that is just making sure that you as an owner are just very consistent with your approach to training. So regardless on the method that you deem kind of most appropriate for yourself and your dog and your situation, the key to kind of getting good results almost always boils down to consistency. So while you may have four hours on a Saturday or Sunday to try to work and train your Great Dane, from a young age, they don't have the attention span necessary to train for that long. You instead will get far, far better results if you spend just five or 10 or 15 minutes every single day, so that way throughout the course of the week, you're getting a lot of repetition, a lot of practice, and much like the scenario of leash training and nail trimming, over the course of three or six or 12 months, you're accumulating so much practice and really ingraining in your dog these very standard obedience commands for things like sit or down or recall that makes them just very, very good at these and that way as they kind of grow larger and stronger, you have really that baseline of training that from there you can expand to more advanced commands if you want. All right, so enough for talking about training. Let's move on to number seven here. And that's just simply that knowing that a Great Dane is a very special breed. You know, it's a giant dog. They have different requirements for food. You need to have beds and crates and space and all kinds of different accommodations kind of ready for them. Uh, several owners reported that they just simply were not prepared before they brought their dog home. Uh, so the key to success in my mind, very, very much so boils down to preparation. Uh, so your, you know, the time you spent to go and gather these items, make checklists, get the house ready, you know, puppy proof it. Um, while it only may take 15 minutes here and there to do all this, it's much better to do that in advance before you get the dog, instead of waiting for them to come home. And you're trying to make corrections for all these types of things that were overlooked or forgotten while you're also managing a puppy who is just perhaps going around, going crazy, getting into everything. Uh, so really just spend that little bit of time and you'll see that it will pay, that it will pay massive dividends uh, once your dog does arrive. Now for number eight on the list, and this is our final one, but it's the one that I heard the most commonly across the hundreds of different feedback comments that I got, is that regardless of whether your Great Dane lives to be five or 10, or if you're really lucky, 15 years old, that every single owner wishes that they'd spent more time with their dog. Now we all know that during the puppy phases especially, your dog can be very frustrating when they're you know, biting you and getting into stuff 
But you know, as they get older, make sure that you just enjoy every single minute and hour and day that you have with them because the time that we truly have together um, is very limited. So make sure you enjoy it, make the most of it and love them. Um, so that way you can really cherish that time for years to come. So with that, I'd like to take a quick second just to say thank you to everybody who participated in the comments by sharing the things that they wish that they had changed for their great team to really maximize the time together and the joy that they experienced with them. Uh, hopefully this helped all of you who are watching who did not contribute to know the things that you might want to keep an eye out for, you know, just based on the feedback that were heard from hundreds of other Great Dane owners. Uh, so I do truly hope that you found this helpful. And until next time, stay Dane, my friends. Mm -hmm.